discussing the frequency response of second order systems. So that means the input signal is of a sinusoidal form. That is the input signal F T equal to A into sin of omega T. So A is the amplitude of the input signal. Omega is the frequency of the input signal. So you should know that there is a possibility of confusion and you should take care to avoid the mistake. Omega is the frequency of the input signal while omega n is the natural frequency of the system that is a property of the measuring instrument. So which remains constant for a particular measuring instrument while omega will keep changing depending on the input signal. Now the solution as usual is the line response is given by the transient response which is solved by the solution of the homogeneous part and the statistic part is given by this function which is k a by root of 1 minus omega by omega n squared whole square plus 2 zeta omega by omega n squared into sine of omega t plus phi of omega well, of course, omega is the input signal frequency. Ka is the amplitude for a, if the signal was applied statically. Omega is the frequency of the input signal. Omega n is the natural frequency of the Instrument system and zeta is the damping ratio of the machine system. So phi of omega is a time lag which is given by tan inverse of minus 2 zeta omega by omega n by 1 minus omega by omega n square. So this part we can rewrite as the statistical part can be rewritten as B of omega into sine of omega t plus phi of omega. So B omega is the amplitude which depends on omega and sine is sine of omega t plus phi of omega is this part. So the magnitude ratio is B by K. So that is the amplitude of the output signal by the amplitude of the output signal if the same signal was applied statically. So that is equal to 1 by 1 minus omega by omega n square plus square plus 2 zeta omega by omega n square. This does shows the magnitude ratio for different values of signal frequency omega given the damping ratio and natural frequency of the measuring instrument. So when omega is very small, that the signal frequency is very small, the magnitude ratio is close to 1 unless it is very heavily damped. And as the signal frequency becomes closer to the natural frequency, for the undamped case zeta equal to zero, the magnitude ratio increases and at omega equal to omega n it becomes infinity. So that is the phenomenon of resonance. So even though the input signal has a low amplitude, the output display it will be very high. So that is usually of no use in a measuring instrument. And then, but of course, uh, real instruments there will always be some damping. So the magnitude ratio will not go to infinity, but will reach some finite value. 
but still it will be higher than the input or the ideal value 1. And then for critical damping, it just goes down. And for our dam case, the magnitude ratio uh, never reaches 1, it's always less. So the same graph uh, is usually plotted in log log scale when it is called a border plot. So usually electrical engineers and in control system theory use this sort of graph because you can combine the output for various signals. Uh, the multiplication becomes addition if you are taking in log scale. So they prefer this sort of a graph. Otherwise, the information procedure is same. And the phase shift. Okay, when the signal frequency omega is less than omega n, the phase shift is starts from zero when signal frequency is zero to, and there is a switch over from zero to minus pi as the signal frequency crosses the natural frequency. So for all damp case, of course, it is not very, there is no sudden switch, it just slowly changes over. So the system characteristics, when zeta is zero, that is there is no damping, when the signal frequency is close to the natural frequency, the magnitude ratio approaches infinity and the lag <coughs> jumps to minus pi. Earlier it was 0, now it becomes pi. So this phenomenon is called resonance. But of course, real systems will never have zeta equal to 0, it will be greater than 0. So magnitude of resonance is reduced, but there may there may be resonance, okay, but the amplitude will not be so high. The frequency of resonance is called the resonance frequency omega r equal to omega n, the natural frequency into square root of 1 minus 2 zeta square, where of course zeta is the damping ratio. When the signal frequency is very small compared to the natural frequency, the magnitude ratio will be close to 1 and the phase lag 0. That means the information concerning the input signal of frequency omega will be passed through to the output signal with little alteration in the amplitude or phase shift. So there is not much change in the amplitude or phase shift compared to the signal of zero frequency. So this region of frequencies is called the transmission band of the instrument. So it is transmitted without any distortion. Okay, seismograph is actually not in this. You can see the video. So there we try to measure the vibrations of the earth. It is much higher than the natural frequency omega. The magnitude ratio will be close to zero. And the lag will be large minus pi. So the amplitude information is attenuated. So amplitude is shown, amplitude is almost zero. So this region of frequencies is called the filter band. So in this uh, wine glass video, we can see that the wine glass is kept on a table and the table is subjected to vibrations, but the vibrations are not transmitted because there is a device in between. Okay, so now we come to uh, we'll do a problem. So a force transducer having a damping ratio of 0.5 and a natural frequency of 4000 Hz is available for use to measure the periodic signal of 2000 Hz, determining the dynamic error percentage. So the properties of the measuring instrument are given, that is its damping ratio and its natural frequency. Now the signal frequency is 2000 Hz. So what will be the dynamic error? So if we know the magnitude ratio, we can determine dynamic error. So we utilize the formula for magnitude ratio. 
So the signal frequency is 2000 hertz. The natural frequency is 4000 hertz. So omega by omega is 0.5. So the formula for magnitude ratio is this. So into which we substitute these values, omega by omega into we substitute. And zeta is also 0.5. So the magnitude ratio for a particular signal frequency of 2000 will be 1.1094. So the error will be in terms of percentage subtract 1 multiply by 1. So that is 11 percent. So another problem which is I think from the textbook by Figliola. So, it will be difficult to get the right. The Takama Narrows Bridge video is also, link is given in the server. Please view that. Okay. With that, we